hello everyone and welcome to my channel if you are new if you're not new welcome back to my channel my name is marina and today i am doing another one of my monthly wrap-ups of the books that i've read and i feel like it's gonna be really fun i got through some pretty good books i got through eight books this month in comparison to april where i got through like 12 13 i guess you could say eight isn't a lot but in my head i would consider that a lot it was just a really slow reading month i got through pretty decent stuff i feel like and i just want to share it and tell you guys my ratings and all that stuff oh wait i almost forgot my laptop where i literally have all my ratings down that would have been a shit show let's just get started shall we i promised you guys last month that I will get through this series and I kind of stuck to my word. I read Siege and Storm, the second book in the Grishaverse trilogy. This is by Lee Bardugo, by the way, if you guys don't know who, you, everyone knows the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I'm not spe special at all. I finally read it, I finally got to it. I'm not gonna explain the plot of this because it, this takes place right after the events of Shadow and Bone and I'm not gonna spoil anything, but, but, I will thoroughly and say that I enjoyed this a lot more than the first book. I finally got to see the development of Mal and Alina's friendship, relationship, whatever you want to call what they are in this series. Like there's a lot to like lean back on in terms of like why they care about each other so much. I feel like that wasn't really thoroughly explained in the first one. You get to see their dynamic more in this book than in the previous one, which I really enjoyed. Still don't like them as a couple though, but it was nice to actually see like why they care about each other so much instead of like it kind of coming out of nowhere happening and out of thin air i gave this book a four out of five simply because i did think i genuinely thought it was better than the first one i feel like the characters were developed a lot more uh the plot hap it was like really fast paced the plot came and like went like in the first i want to say 20 pages the plot it, it and nothing held back it was very fast paced which i liked because in the first book it took literally halfway through for something to happen and i that's why i gave it such a low rating whereas in this book everything is so much more fast paced everyone knows what they have to do everyone knows the mission the plan and i liked that if you see me looking this way by the way i'm looking at my notes i have my notes next to me because i just can't remember anything to save my life <laughs> um i will say though once like you got to the middle of this book nothing really happened like <laughs> once they finally got to the palace it seemed like they were everyone was just kind of still and stagnant but i completely understand they had to plan for what happens at the end of this book but i don't know it's just a little bit of nothing for a good i want to say 150 pages not even lying maybe a little bit more maybe 200 this book is like 400 pages long so i don't want to say i'm like exaggerating but i don't even think that's a that's an exaggeration throughout half of this book nothing really happens but i enjoyed seeing alina back at the palace from like where she was in the first book and seeing how much she's like changed and like grown as a character because from how she was in the palace in the first book to this book i it's just a, it's a distinct difference it's a clear difference and i like seeing her character growth a lot also liked meeting the new characters in this book we meet the twins and nikolai i love nikolai probably my favorite character in the series not gonna lie i'm pretty sure Le bardugo made a book for him king of scars i'm pretty sure it came out like a year or two ago i'm definitely gonna read that if it's about him or if he's in it like i will read it uh, i'm kind of obsessed with this character it's bad it's bad i love the twins but like nikolai yeah he's kind of stole the show I love him. I love him. He's a good character. Overall though, yes, the book is a 4 out of 5 for me. But the next book I'm going to talk about is the first book in a series, The Chase by L. Kennedy. If you guys remember L. Kennedy, I read a series from her. I read the off-campus series by L. Kennedy and The Chase is the start of a spin-off series, Briar You. I mentioned briefly in my last wrap up that I started this book and I am now finally here to talk about it. It follows the character that we see on and off campus that I really enjoyed and then he didn't get his own book and I was kind of confused and then I heard that he got it in this new series so I was like okay I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it so I did and 
Safe to say I was kind of disappointed, kind of, sort of. I gave this book a two out of five. I wanted to love it. I wanted to, I wanted to so bad because the character that we follow in this, I loved him in the original series. Like that's why I was so compelled to read this book because he was like very intriguing to me. He's in all four books in the off campus series, but he's always in the background. But every time he popped up, he kind of stole the show for me. So I, was, I really wanted to read this. And then when I finally got to this book, I was like, I don't think I like you. <laughs> I don't think I like him all that much. I know I don't like him all that much. I like the main girl character. The main girl that we're following is the sister of Dean De Laurentiis, who has his own book in the Off Campus series. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna like this because she got a few cameos in the Off Campus series. I was like, okay, these two together, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great. I don't think that's the case for them. I didn't really feel the connection between either of the love interests i haven't even explained the plot have i if the plot there really is no plot they're just living together in a, a townhouse of sorts i think an apartment maybe with like two other guys and she wants him he doesn't want her until later they realize that they do and then they're trying to like battle that out with each other because he's all about no drama and she's kind of brings drama wherever she goes and like and yeah it's just them trying to work that out that was a terrible summary but to be honest there was no real plot to this i'm gonna be honest like i don't even know what trope to call this broody guy sunshine girl i think maybe it just kind of fell flat for me when they finally got together because they got together i think like mid book but when they did nothing really happened it was really kind of boring and then the ending was very abrupt it kind of came out of nowhere for me the conflict that was solved in the end wasn't really a conflict between the two love interests it was more of like an outside conflict for summer the girl main love interest yeah but with them as a couple i didn't i wasn't feeling it i don't know it was kind of giving me wattpad all the other books in the off campus series give me wattpad but it was like a satisfying wattpad for the most part with this one it just felt like a mess I don't know what this was. It was really just a whole mess. I wanted to root for them so bad. I love them both, I think, individually, but together it wasn't it. And the chemistry just wasn't there. You know, it kind of left me a little bit disappointed because everyone loved the off-campus series, but yet I heard nothing about Briar U. But since I thoroughly enjoyed the off-campus series, I was like, let me give this a chance. And then I was kind of let down, very sad. But we move on, we move. And no, I will not be continuing the series because the new characters we meet in this series as well, they're not as interesting as the ones in off campus. So yeah, not doing that to myself. Next books I'm gonna be talking about, I kind of got bullied into reading them. I'm talking to the people on Twitter that told me to read this. I hope you guys are happy because I guess I'm kind of satisfied that I read this now. Let's talk about Percy Jackson. Yeah, yeah, I read it. I read all five books. And I'm, I'm here to talk about it. If you're like me and didn't have a childhood apparently, cause you can't have a childhood if you haven't read Percy Jackson. This famous book series is by Rick Riordan, the man himself, the legend himself. This is Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Y'all already know, y'all already know, y'all are going to put me ahead. Never read Percy Jackson. I was never into those books where I'm like, I didn't, I read Harry Potter, read half of, the first book of Harry Potter and then I gave up and then I was just like I'm not reading Percy Jackson because I know that it was like a big thing you either like Percy Jackson or you like Harry Potter it was like the it was like a big thing I was like I'm not reading either because <laughs> I just lumped this up with like the Harry Potter mess that people were on about I didn't even know what it was actually about if I'm being honest but now that I've read it I kind of regret not reading it when I was younger I'm pretty sure it's like a middle grade book I could have easily read this when I was younger if you guys don't know what Percy Jackson is it is about 12 year old Percy Jackson well he's 12 years old in this book but uh he finds out that he is a demigod he is taken to Camp Half-Blood where he learns how to do his demigod duties and live with the other demigods on the camp go on adventures along the way and along the way he finds out more things about himself that could possibly affect everything else around him i can't give away too much i don't know if that's a spoiler i don't think it is let's just get started shall we 
The Lightning Thief, the first book, the classic. I gave this a four out of five. I liked it. The reason why May was a slow month for me was because I told myself I'm not gonna start any other book or whatever until I get through the Percy Jackson series. Cause I got, I bought the books in April, but I never actually started them. So I was like, you have five books right here, Marina. You do not need to buy any more until you get through the five that you have. So I was, I pushed myself to read the first book. And for some reason it took me a week, even though this book is only like 300 pages. I don't know. I really had to push myself to read this book it wasn't even that it was hard I actually really liked it I like that it was fast paced it was just like I was in some type of mood at the beginning of May but overall I loved it I love Percy he's the he's so funny like him narr narrating this whole entire story the rest of the stories he's actually hilarious um when he's not doing his demigod duties he's just trying to be some kind of comedian the way he thinks is just very it was very I don't know heartwarming and wholesome to read because he thinks like a kid because he is a kid he's literally like 12 in this book and even the rest of the books as he gets older he's very funny i like the world building a lot i like how it combined greek mythology with like the modern world most of his adventures in this book are about him like going across the country of the united states to see all these demigods and all of their lands and stuff and it's very bizarre actually but like i thoroughly enjoyed that as well I, like the combination of both the Greek world and the modern world and the US combining together in this series is I don't know it's it's just a different take on Greek, Greek mythology that I never would have thought of and the way that Rick Riordan wrote it in this book is phenomenal dare I say I thought that the villain was predictable in the first book specifically like I knew who it was right off the bat right as soon as I heard that oracle prophecy I was like hmm yeah i know exactly <laughs> who this is gonna be but the build up to get to that was worthy in my opinion the first book specifically it kind of gave me catcher in the rye vibes like the way that percy sometimes talks reminds me of holden if you guys have ever read catcher in the rye then you might know what i'm talking about it gave me catcher in the rye but with like greek mythology and i thoroughly enjoyed catcher in the rye so this was actually very enjoyable for that reason and i love greek mythology so this it's honestly fun time. I loved reading this book. Next, Sea of Monsters. So this is book two in this Percy Jackson series. I gave this one a three out of five. I just thought that the plot was kind of bland, but I wasn't a fan of the plot of like going to save Grover and finding like the thing that they need for the camp. It was just very eh to me. I don't know. I don't know. It, it was kind of like it fell flat in the second book, not gonna lie. But I did enjoy it nonetheless. This book was worth it because you get to see Annabeth and Percy's friendship develop a lot more in this book than you did in the first book. And I thought that was very, very nice. I just love slow burn and Percy and Annabeth are literally the definition of slow burn. Can you tell that I love them? Like I genuinely love them. So yeah, I thought this book was worth it for that aspect, but overall it just, it wasn't it for me. Plus it was one of the shorter ones and I feel like the plot kind of wrapped up really quickly. I think it was well well written. I just, I don't, I wish it was a little bit longer. Also the gods that we meet in this, I'm pretty sure we meet Cersei in this. I love Cersei. I love the, the tale of Cersei. So I thought that was a good, that was a good little add in as well from Rick. Good, great, okay. Yeah, three out of five. Next, the Titan's Curse. Yep, yep, let's talk about this, shall we? Five out of five, third book in the series. I love this book. I feel like everyone kind of loves this book. This is really like the climax of the series. If you don't like it, there's something wrong with you. I love the new characters we meet. We meet Talia, we meet uh, Bianca, Nico. We meet the Hunters. The Hunters are so cool. I would really just love like a um, maybe spinoff series focused on the Hunters. I know that he has like many different spinoff series of this, but I would really love one with the Hunters. And then we also meet Rachel. I love Rachel. All the new characters just made the series like so much better in my opinion. Like they just added something that I needed personally. All those new characters I love. They have my whole heart. The ending for this was very cool to me. I loved seeing all the gods on the thrones in Olympus because I'm pretty sure that's the first time we get to see them all there and like up there in olympus together it was it was very cool i liked that a lot i also like the villain in this one the villains plural because they're plural but the villains in this one were really cool because they weren't what i expected this is an emotional roller coaster because the, the villains in this book they they mm, 
the feelings you will get are not expected and it's only the third book in the series that's the thing they kept on getting better and better so like i was just like i'm gonna cry aren't i and then i did this is like such a great climax to a series it's phenomenal really brick did what he had to do in this one five out of five though if you haven't already caught that titan's curse great i love the journey that they went on to go and find who they needed to find it was so well done i it's just it has my heart this book really the, these last three books in the series have my heart for real like i'm not even joking so let's move on shall we we move on to the fourth book in the series the battle of labyrinth and dare i say this book is excellent i'm telling you guys after the third book uh the shit really just like gets going like shit hits the fan this is when i really started to pick up on the series because i got through this series in literally two weeks and it was i think after the third book is when i got through the last books in a week it was it was insane i gave it a five out of five obviously if you couldn't tell if you couldn't tell yeah i gave it a five out of five i'm trash for this book i will probably reread re this one and Titan's Curse more than any of the others. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Maybe the overarching plot of this book alone, like to take out take out the plot of all the books together, because there's like an overarching plot in the whole entire series together. But the plot in this book, oh my god, it's just amazing. It's just that the golden trio going underground in this maze across the country saved the camp, and I I loved it. All the emotional stuff that I went through in Titan's Curse, I just I deserve to see the golden trio do what they have to do you know and then you know there's also Persebeth. Persebeth, they're so cute in this book i can't i really can't i loved them in this book it's just so wholesome it's good sweet wholesome like teenage <sighs> romance but not even romance it's like it's again slow burn it's just amazing it's the way that it's written you root for it throughout all the books in the series and then when we finally get to this one it's like something finally just like happens you're just like oh my god and <laughs> And don't even get me started on the way that Calypso pops in. Yeah, I love Calypso. The, the tale of Calypso I love. So when I finally got to see her in this book, my heart dropped. And then the way we were introduced to her, yeah, it was, it was a lot for me emotionally. I was emotionally like not okay. <laughs> like even thinking about all the events that happened in this book, my heart is kind of like palpitating. It's not it's not feeling okay. This was emotionally scarring as well, but in a totally different way that I did not expect. Like the plot, the romance, the the friendship in this book. I love the cliffhanger at the end. The cliffhanger had me gagged. I I honestly had to pick up the fifth book. That's what happens when I get like the full series like editions of a of a book series i will literally read them back to back like it's a, it's bad like i i got through half of this series in a week it was bad for me out here guys this is a five out of five i loved everything this is like a good build up to what the last book is the adventure in this book is probably my favorite the labyrinth maze it's very interesting if you can already tell by the cover this is also my favorite cover it's just really well done and then you can see like the golden trio running on the maze it's just very cool let's get going to the fifth book y'all look at this look at this look at my man look at my nephew he's on that like yes and percy is my nephew i've claimed him that title leave me alone i said the other books made me emotional this one i had I, it took me like days to recover after reading this book not only because it was the final in the series and i was having like a book hangover but it's because like the the emotional like as soon as you start this book you're you're on the ride like like it starts like like it's just battle throughout the whole entire book from start to finish you don't get a break you don't you never get a break throughout the whole entire book it's always just constant sadness and fighting and heartbreak but also triumph and then like you just you just feel all the emotion for these kids although throughout the book we're following like the mainly just the golden trio you get to see all of the people in camp half blood like actually do something and it makes you very emotional because you you follow these campers throughout the whole entire series like although they're background characters you you know the the campers that they bring up throughout the book that need to do what they have to do like you you see how they've grown with percy over time like it just made me so happy but also like my my heart stopped every five minutes because every time i did i thought something was gonna happen i thought someone was gonna like die it was very it was a lot okay it was a lot in just 400 pages this is how you do a battle this is this is how you write a battle scene the way that it was written oh my goodness just them battling throughout new york against like all of these like it was just so good it was just 400 pages of them battling 
and it was so good and to see the growth of all the characters it got me so emotional at some points like at some points i really did cry i read this in a day it was a lot for me to handle and then the, the twist at the end the way that they ended up saving the world i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting the character to do what they did and don't even start on persepeth when the slow burn is actually worth it and the slow burn is actually worth it my heart my heart i'm sorry this when i think about the last three books in the series my heart just does a thing where it falls into my ass i don't know what that's about i guess i didn't have a childhood i guess you guys were right my childhood wasn't complete i didn't read the percy jackson series the percy jackson and the olympia in the olympian series i didn't read it as a kid and i regret it with all my being because these books are very good like very good i really wish i read this when i was a kid do you guys want me to read the red like the spinoff series of percy jackson because i know there's like the next one in this is the Heroes of Olympus series. Am I correct? I started the sample of the first book. I didn't get into it because I, I just wasn't ready to like let Percy and them go even though they're in the next series. I know but I just didn't, I didn't want to let them go as main characters yet so I didn't buy the full copy of the book but do you guys want me to because I might. I might because I'm still not over it. I'm still not over what this what these books took me through it was a lot okay it was really a lot i i still don't know how i'm sitting here talking about it and not bawling my eyes out if you guys want me to read the heroes of olympus series along with like the other chronicles let me know also tell me if they're good because i've heard mixed things i've heard really mixed reviews on the spinoff series of percy but i will read it if he's in it because i love them these are my children these these are like these are my children before i move on to the next book i will do a book ranking because i feel like it's what I need to do every time I get through a whole series in a month. The fifth book in my ranking is Sea of Monsters. Obviously, because it has like the least rated one. So obviously, Sea of Monsters is fifth. The Lightning Thief is fourth. It's just the way it is, okay? And then the third spot is the Battle of Labyrinth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how sure about that I am though. I'm not, I don't know how sure about that I am. Second is the Titan's Curse yeah and then the first of course is the last olympian now i will say two and three switch a lot titan's curse and battle labyrinth they switch a lot but i know for sure that the last olympian is taking that first place i've never read like a, a middle grade book that affected me so much emotionally in my life like this book it's really just all war all battle like you will feel things no matter what like it's it's really a lot like beginning to end you don't get a break you don't get a break all the build-up in the four books led to this and it's it's a lot on the heart but it's so worth it in the end i'm saying this like you guys haven't read it i'm sure everyone in the world has read the series instead of me i'm late that was percy jackson that was fun thank you guys on twitter i don't remember who but thank you whoever was on twitter that recommended me to read this who bullied me i'm i'm here i'm part of the squad i'm a camp half blood low key i'm here okay let's move on to the last book that i read in may and that is you guys already know if you watched the reading vlog for it crescent city by miss sarah j mass house of earth and blood can you guys see that i don't know if you guys can see that i did a reading log for it if you guys want to watch me have like a breakdown every 10 minutes this is sarah j mass's newest series it's a adult fantasy it's basically about uh this girl named bryce bryce is like a party girl she likes doing whatever she wants she's very fun wild spirit you know she's she's just living her life doing the best she can along the way and then all of a sudden this tragedy happens to her and then two years later she gets the chance to investigate who was the one behind the, t the tragedy and it's basically a revenge plot of sorts and then of course because it's sarah j mass we have to have like some winged male bad boy-esque character to be her love interest that's that's what this book is i did a reading vlog for it so if you want like a more in-depth thing i guess watch it but also there's spoilers so i don't know if you guys really want that but i did it so i gave this book a three out of five i personally enjoyed the world i liked how it was a modern take on fantasy like there's actual technology in the world you know like they have computers and like very advanced technology actually most of the time when they were explaining it, i was very confused but the, te the technology is there and there was therapy mentioned like they have therapy in this book and usually like in fantasy when characters go through like heavy trauma they never get therapy and they have it in this book i was like oh my god like the the world is actually very advanced 
fantasy in this book and it's like a it's it is a modern take on fantasy and i've thoroughly enjoyed that i thought it was very different from all the other fantasy books that i read that i've read in the past i will say though the world in general confused the hell out of me i it was a lot of info dump like it took a lot for me to get through the first 100 pages because it was just so info dumpy i didn't understand anything i didn't understand any of the characters that we meet in the first 100 pages because like they're barely explained it takes you until maybe chapter 12 to get into the plot of this book and it's it's really a lot chapter 12 is at least like 200 to 50 ish pages in if you saw my reading vlog you will notice how i'm confused throughout most of the book because i didn't really understand how the world worked i didn't understand how the government worked and the government is a big part of the story so like you have to understand how the hierarchies work but even even like still after I've read this book I don't fully understand how or why it's made the way it is even though there was a bunch of info dump in the first five, 100 pages it, it gave me a headache I had to spread this book out to like four or five days because I just didn't understand it because this is a series it's not a standalone book so I feel like if she's if Sarah J Mass is going to make this whole world and just want to say everything about it in this one book not even spread it throughout the whole entire book but just in the first few hundred pages i feel like it's very that's very weird like you like there's a way to handle world building without like having to just put all of this on to your readers you know like I don't know I, I feel like it was it was a lot like it gave me a headache at some point so I was like why are, are there like 10 paragraphs about this like I don't know this hole in the ground or I don't know this room that no one really goes to in the end or like it was just very weird that was the one downer for me I just didn't like how much information she put into it at once I feel like as the series went on we will get to know more about that but apparently she had a different plan in mind I don't know I liked Bryce as a, as a main character I feel like I could relate to her and how she deals with her emotions that's what I really liked about her throughout the whole entire book she's kind of dealing with her own trauma and she's very sad while doing it though like she doesn't she doesn't have any self-worth like she's very depressed throughout the whole entire book and like to get into her mind and read how she dealt with what she went through at the beginning of the book it just felt very relatable at some points for me personally I like that as for the romance in this book I didn't mind it I liked how it was kind of slow burnish I don't know it, it was nice it this book is a 800 pages so it's a commitment like you gotta be really committed to get through it and I feel like the slow burn was okay it's kind of like an enemy to lovers thing or like a partner in crime trope maybe so if you're into that you should definitely read this I personally don't read much murder mystery I don't actually this is I think my first murder mystery in a long time if not my actual first and I thoroughly enjoyed it I liked the mix of fantasy romance and uh just like a murder mystery I like it all but if I'm being honest I was only here for the romance like the murder mystery if I thought too much about it it gave me a headache so I had to like I had to whatever came up in the book I was just I was just rolling I was just vibing I was like okay I guess that's okay I didn't try to theorize too much if you don't think about the book too much then I feel like it'll be fine but if you think about the world and the characters and like the overarching plot it's just it will give you a headache like this book is unnecessarily long for the amount of stuff that's put in it you would hope that it's all developed and I guess in some way it is like I guess the characters are in some way developed and I guess the plot was developed but I don't know there's something about it just felt off to me at some points like I, I swear if you look at my reading vlog I am just very confused throughout most of the book it didn't help that it was a slow start so I really had to push through those first few hundred pages to get to the actual like meat of the story I was really interested in reading this because I got through Court of Thorns and Roses so I was like okay maybe this will be somewhat better because although I enjoyed A Court of Thrones and Roses I'm not sure if I enjoyed it more because of like the characters I read or because of like the plot of it whereas with this I guess I could say the same I don't know if that's just how she writes it but when it came to the plot I really did not care all that much I really just wanted to make sure Bryce was okay I wanted to make sure Hunt Hunt is the angel winged male guy that's her love interest I wanted to make sure he was okay in the end I just wanted to make sure everyone was okay also I don't know if this is just like me if you read the A Court of Thrones and Roses series then let me know Know, but does Hunt remind you of act like Cassian? Because throughout the whole entire book, I was like, he seems like a carbon copy of Cassian. Like on, like like it's to a T. It's very uncanny. It made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> I was like, am I supposed to imagine someone else? Because all I'm getting is Cassian vibes. Is Sarah J Mass not trying to make different characters in her series? Like, is this like an on purpose thing? It was very strange to me. Like they, she wrote them kind of exactly the same 
it was hard to detach from Akatar fully while reading this because Hunt reminded me so much of Cassian. It, it was it was just weird. That was Crescent City by the Sarah DMS. Give it a read if you want, but I have warned you. It's not easy. It's not easy, especially in the first few hundred pages. But if you're into murder mystery, if you're into fantasy, if you're into romance, then I think you would like this, maybe? And with that being said, I'm done. If you guys like this, thanks. If you like to follow me on social media, here it is. I mostly interact on Twitter, but if you would like to follow me on all my other social medias, they will be linked in the description below. I recommend me books on there. I will most likely read it because what else am I going to do with my time, you know? Literally talk about anything on Twitter and I'll most likely answer. Yeah, I think that's it. Bye everyone.